Stories work very effectively when the audience tells themselves tells themselves the story. So you just set up a framework within which they can tell themselves the story. What that creates is investment. There's a there's a saying which every writer knows, which is show don't tell. Right. Show the audience uh, the emotions mm. and let them decide what's going on. And the more they do that, the more they're in, they're invested in the story because they're part of it. They have they have given something to it, and that means that they'll stay till the end to see what's going to happen and see whether their prejudices, their uh, their thoughts and desires match. Match. Right. 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 Desires of the of the the protagonist, the hero. Welcome everybody to the Digital Report podcast and on today's episode I'm super excited because we're going to be talking about stories and how to use stories in business and whatnot and I've got a very special guest today a fellow called David Fox who's a script writer a writer a script consultant life coach with over 40 years of experience working in theater radio film uh, he started his acting career in the 80s and founded the Touring Theatre Company. Um, he's won awards for in a play he wrote and was able to move into television and write many scripts for lots of adult and children plays and programs. And now he's uh, teaching online through um, his course called The Storyteller Gene. So welcome, David. Hello, Jatinda. How are you? I'm so excited to just you know, talk to you and pick your brains about your, your the wealth of knowledge and experience you have around storytelling, you know? So, um, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll just dive straight into it. I mean, what, what I was fascinated about was something you shared with me on your, um, in your uh, submission post was that you said you're fascinated by the creative process and particularly the ways in which we can sabotage our best efforts by the wrong thinking. Let's start from there. Share with me a bit about that, about the creative process. Well, um, I mean, uh, I, as you know, I started about 10 years ago to get into um, self-help, self-development, personal development. And um, I met uh, uh, an acquaintance of ours, David Key, who is a life coach, and um, I started working with him. Um, whilst still doing all my script work and stuff, but I wanted to get past some of my hang-ups. And um, so I, I was able to enroll on his, um, on his courses, doing NLP and hypnotherapy and so on. And as I was going through this process, I, I, I realized there were a lot of things in NLP particularly that uh, were very much like my own writing process, my own, which, which reminded me of my creative process. Mm. You know, there's a thing called like timeline therapy, where you imagine that you've created something and you actually physically walk a line and, um, and at the end of the line, you, you imagine that you've reached your goal and then you look back and you see... Uh, you imagine the obstacles that you uh, that you that you got past in the course of doing it. it's all in your imagination mm -hmm. but it gives you this uh, sense of empowerment somehow and I realized that I'd been doing that in my in my whole writing career um, because when I first started in television my first job was uh, casualty mm -hmm. And this was an hour of television. I'd never written a word of television before. And uh, so it was very helpful to me just intuitively to imagine that I had written it already and, um, and then sort of uh, work f backwards from there in some strange way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got very, very interested in the whole creative process and, um, and how my brain works mm. when I'm, when I'm um, 
embarking on a story, trying to create a story, as I'm doing now with a play that I'm I'm writing now. And uh, I realized that most of it is simply asking myself questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what I realized is that I many questions that we ask ourselves when we're trying to create a story are rhetorical questions. Like we say, why is this not working? Why am I having problems here? Why, you know, mm -hmm. why did I even start on this? This is crazy. Why, why am I? But what we don't do is actually write those questions down mm -hmm. and try to answer them. Mm -hmm. So my system has always been write the questions down, not on a laptop, with a pen or a pencil, and give myself options to actually answer the questions. It sounds so obvious, but in actual fact, we don't we don't tend to we do it. Yeah, yeah. And I always give myself op give myself options for what the problem, what the answer to the problem might be. Mm -hmm. I do very very simple things like like writing question the word question mm -hmm. and then writing the question as i as i understand it yeah and then writing answers options one two three four and i write as many options as i can and i start until i start writing sort of crazy options right yeah okay, okay. yeah and what this is doing is it gives my subconscious uh, room to play because mm -hmm. all storytelling is 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 play it's play yeah in a sense mm -hmm. but unless i do that and i'm very disciplined about doing it and then the answer will come mm -hmm. uh, because i've allowed myself and it's a very simple straightforward technique mm -hmm. but um it works mm -hmm. and that, so that's that's partly what i'm teaching but it's all to do with um the the right brain the right side of the brain the dreaming playful side of the brain being allowed to emerge mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i teach i teach that i teach basically three there's three parts to it there's uh, the value of silence and meditation, okay. which is in increasingly important nowadays. With there's so much noise now, mm. you know, we, mm -hmm. we we're bombarded with news. We have our phones, we have our laptops, and it's it's very difficult sometimes to feel the silence be yeah. below all of that, which is where the really good stuff the authentic stuff can come can from come. yeah yeah and um so that's the first part the second part is this understanding of the way that your brain works that your your left left side of your brain is organizing its language mm. it's the it's the it's the agendas that we you know we follow through the day uh and uh the right brain is all the dreaming, the subconscious stuff, which is so vital if you're if you're telling stories. Mm. So understanding that is the second part of the equation. And the third part uh, is really um, to do with how stories affect the audience to understand how uh, for a story to work, especially in film. Mm -hmm. But I think in all stories, um, they, stories work very effectively when the audience tells themselves tells themselves the story. Oh wow! Yes. So you just set up a framework within which they they can they can tell themselves the story. Wow! What that creates is investment. Mm -hmm. If you're telling, uh, there's a there's a 
saying which every writer knows, which is show, don't tell. Right. Show the audience uh, the emotions mm. and let them decide what's going on. Wow. And the more they do that, the more they're, in, they're invested in the story because they're part of it. Right. They have, they have given something to it. And that means that they'll stay till the end to see what's going to happen and see whether their prejudices, their, uh, their, um, their thoughts and desires match, match. Right, right, right. the desires of the, of the, the protagonist, the hero. Oh, so wow. Three, three parts to it, really. Yeah. The, the first is probably the most important, you know, mm. just being quiet. <laughs> I think that's just being quiet. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, um, that's so fascinating. I mean, you know, um, like what you shared about, you know, when you're having come across the, the kind of NLP, um, stuff and the life coaching and understanding how the brain works, you were able to relate to it and even, um, kind of unlock your own, um, kind of thinking and understanding as to what you're doing as a process. So you can actually, um, I mean, one of the things we usually say, sharpen your sword, right? So you, you basically, strengthen what you already had but now you're consciously aware of what you're doing what that process is um and you you applied it to well that's how we're doing in storytelling um to just get that deeper element of it but what's what's really fascinating with with what you just shared is that um i I mean i can you give an example of how we can do something where we get the person invested like what? What could be a good good example of how the person would start to put their own like prejudices, like you were saying, their own kind of things into whatever's going on? Because I think that's 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 an interesting one. I've never thought of it that way. There's a um, the writer called David Mamet who's written a, a lot of um, oh, it's wonderful plays, but also a lot of essays about mm-hmm. the creative process. And he gives an example where um, you're 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 writing a film uh, in which uh, a woman, for example, uh, is suspicious that her her husband is having an affair, and uh, he he gives two examples. One of one in which um, a, a neighbour sort of gives her the information that um, she she's seen the husband out with with some woman some strange woman which is one way of putting giving the audience the information and the other uh the other example he gives which is far better is um she picks up a she's in the kitchen of her house and she picks up a note from him saying gone bowling be back soon she goes to uh she's a little bit suspicious she goes to a cupboard looks inside and there's his bowling ball in uh in in the bag uh, tucked away in the back of the cupboard so she knows she hasn't she ha- he hasn't gone bowling so we go aha mm. and we we say he's having an affair mm. not we're not told he's having an affair we say he's having we an say affair. We're, wow. the, we're the detective okay now that does something neurologically to to us as we watch because in every in every uh story we are a participant Mm. particularly if it's a really good story Mm. and um the other thing i was going to say is that at the heart of every story is i think an impossible question right and what I mean by an impossible question is um, something that everybody is, everybody will disagree on, and you know, to some extent. Um, and the example that I give again it's about um, infidelity, actually, or or, or a sort of um, romantic kind of uh, thing, which is that. Um, Suppose you fall in love with your with your brother's wife, uh, and you suspect she feels the same 
what are you going to do? Or suppose you fall in love with your uh, best friend's husband. That's a, it's a question with no answer because some mm -hmm. people will say, well, it's forbidden. You, you, you just have to live your life and let it go. And another person will say, well, you only live once. Mm. You know, if you see love, you must grab it, you know, and, and uh, all is fair in love and war. So that's a good, that's a good start. That's a good basis for a story. Mm -hmm. And you can think of if you if if you think of your favorite movies, your favorite stories, if you really think if you really sort of uh, analyze them, there there's always an impossible question at the heart of, of the story. Mm -hmm. And you can and it's not just about, you know, personal relationships, although they're, you know, they're fundamental, but you can broaden it out to, um, you know, um, major issues major questions like you know should you go to war for a good cause mm -hmm. you know is it ever is it ever justified to kill or harm another person uh you know what what happens um what happens if there's an intruder in your house is mm -hmm. it okay to you know uh no, use, use, <laughs> use and, and on and on, but these but these are moral issues, and they are at the heart of all of our stories. And uh, you know, in a sense, the um, stories have taken you know the, the 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 stories that we consume, the movies and the and the and the, and the novels, uh, have sort of taken the place of what would have been sermons, you know, mm. uh, hundred two hundred years ago would have you know you'd have you'd have examined those issues uh, yeah. in church. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, impossible questions uh, are, they, they make good stories. They make good stories, yeah. Simple yeah. as that. Wow. This is, it's, so this, this is really the questions inside my mind now, is that when you are writing a story then if you're sharing a story like how does that come about does it like is it an idea of a scenario and how somebody got there or is it that you sit down and think how do I make someone take the person on this journey to get them to learn something like what what would you say is like uh, I mean why would you create a story if that makes sense you know like what's at the base of it um because when we make movies obviously there's a reason behind it but if we're for example um going to share a story about our life and we might be sharing that with our audience online for example we then you know put something together in order to, to do that but how do you actually like go about saying okay i'm going to create a story about this like what's that all about <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> I can only say that uh, when I started out, I was uh, I was fascinated by genres, you know. Mm. So um, the first the first few plays that I wrote were very sort of large concept sort of things that uh, I wrote a, a play based on the Superman story, which was sort of comic and musical, and uh, and I wrote another play about a sort of gothic horror um the sort of edgar Allan poe style thing and again a, quite a lot of humor and um i was just having fun with genres and playing really yeah but uh, then as i as i uh, grew as a person and and understood more about the world and i took i took themes f from my personal experience mm -hmm. So I I, uh, I wrote a play that won an award, which actually got me into television, because um, I was able to show the play around, and and uh, yeah. producer of Casualty um, took me on board as a result, mm -hmm. and that was simply based on on uh, a job that I'd had as a telemarketer, in in a pretty seedy little <laughs> grubby <laughs> office. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in London and uh, having a, a pretty pretty miserable time and as I was working so I was picking up the 
the language of the people uh, that I was working with. And the, there was a lot of cynicism, as you can probably imagine. And um, so the play turned out to be my sort of revenge on those people. <laughs> <laughs> But I, because I, because I love, um, I, I, what it's hard to explain. I love characters, yeah, and I love the idea of redemption. So, mm -hmm. what I, uh, what, and redemption is another theme that's hugely um, part of the the stories that we consume that a lot of them are about redemption. So I, I invented a character who was a cynical telemarketer who would lie and cheat and tell people all kinds of nonsense over the phone. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a young woman come in to a young, very naive woman come in to the office to do, to do some work. And um, in the course of the play, as she becomes more sort of hardened, he he softens up, right? Uh, because he sees that what she's doing is not right, you know, for mm -hmm. her. And um, so by the end of the play, they're kind of reversed, and he's he's the he becomes the nice guy, mm -hmm. who who who's kind of ashamed of what he's done <laughs> in teaching her the the false stuff. Mm. So I that was the tra trajectory of the character, mm -hmm. and uh, once I'd figured that out, it was a case of just enjoying the um, the language and the uh, and 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 the games that these people play. Yeah. yeah. So where does that come from? It, in that case, it sort of came from. I would say I would say it was a sort of a revenge act. Yeah. Not that yeah. any of them ever came to see it, but um, mm -hmm. it was more uh, it, it was more uh, playing with that with with the, with the language of those people and how they went about their business, which was which was really corrupt. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. was. Uh, wow. But within that, you can have a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, do you know uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? It was another David Mamet uh, play. It was right, no, I'm not familiar. No. Made into a film, and it's similar kind of theme, but in America with um, with with some uh, guys who who sell land, mm -hmm. and and they're and they're extremely corrupt. You know, so <laughs> one critic sort of compared it to that, and. Uh, I hadn't actually seen it at that point, but yeah, similar kind of thing. Right, right, right. See, that's that's fascinating. So, with what you're what you're sharing is that there's um, th there's kind of two two areas, and there's a bit of a crossover in the sense that um, a story can be based on your experience of something, right? So, a learning or understanding or experience you've had. Then the other side of it would be, like you said, you can you can take that experience and be like, well, if it played out like this, this is like an imagine, imagined kind of scenario. So you create a story that's like, you know, it's something you make up in a sense, yeah? Um, and then you've got the bit in the middle, which is like, so you've got one on experience, one that's made up, and the one that's an amalgamation of the two, isn't it? Um, like you said, like you showed that it, it was almost like a revenge story because, <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's, that's kind of, that's how far, you know, these things are... Um, they evolve, isn't it, from our understanding of stuff. So if we were to, um, like if somebody comes to you with with their experience, yeah, and you were to talk, turn that into a story, I mean, like what's the process there? Like, because when, we, when we're like in business, for example, we're online, we're sharing stories all the time, and most of the time they're based on our experience of what's going on. So what's a, like a good, I suppose, framework for people to, you know, create a story out of their own experience? Well, again, it's uh, it, it's trying to find the essence of something. Mm -hmm. you know, um, everybody's life is uh, enormously complicated, and uh, you know, I think we write stories in order to um, distill uh, experience. You know, mm 
Mm-hmm. Because in every in every story we we are we are massively editing um, the human experience in order to mm. in order to boil it down into an essence. But really, uh, when you're when you're creating a story, you're looking for action mm-hmm. uh, because people are what the, what they do, uh, you know, rather than what they think because mm-hmm. we can mm-hmm. all think a thousand things every day but what we actually do what we <clears throat> what we put into action yeah defines us mm-hmm. so um there's no no coincidence that we're called actors you know <laughs> when, when we when we go on stage uh, or 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 in front of a camera we're we're acting mm-hmm. because uh the dialogue as in life as in art is 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 the is the froth on the top you know <laughs> we mm-hmm. can all say things which we don't mean a thousand times a day just yeah. to get by mm-hmm. but it's what we do so in a person's life you would look at the things that they have done especially the things that they've done that they didn't want to do mm. Mm-hmm. that's crucial right because, uh, because uh, it's it's bravery that and I say again I say redemption you know mm-hmm. these are the things that we look for in life this these are mm-hmm. the things that we that we aspire to and that we admire in other people is that mm-hmm. they is that they do they're they're courageous in their choices and they don't choose the easy way out of any situation mm-hmm. they go forward you know mm-hmm. and we can all think of uh, f- friends that we admire who have uh, endured very very difficult um situations uh whether financial or personal uh losses um loss loss of loved ones terrible things illness mm. and and persevered and uh dis, you know beat the odds mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and think of you can you can think of many uh, stories and films in which you've seen a character mm. uh, persist mm. despite major um major trauma mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and 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 refuse to let go of an idea refuse to mm-hmm. let go of uh uh, of uh, of a dream so if i was talking to any person who wanted to tell their story i'd tr- i'd try and go straight to those those things that challenged them more than anything else yeah and again not not what did they think but what did they do what did they do mm-hmm. yeah so that's the answer really that's, the- that's that's it's really amazing i mean like when you as you were sharing that i was thinking of like films i've seen and like things that create inspiration and you look at it and go wow that's amazing it's like what 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 do you think is um why why is this story so powerful why is this kind of idea of somebody overcoming something so powerful you know why do we resonate to it so much um what would you say to that well because life is life is so hard mm. you know it's so hard just to get by mm-hmm. and uh i've always thought you know that the the simplest stories um can be v- extremely moving you know uh i've got very frustrated this is a, a sort of tangent really but um <clears throat> We see nowadays in our sort of soap operas that unless there's a murder going on, <laughs> that somehow that that there's no drama. Mm-hmm. But there's drama in the in the smallest things, like somebody. Uh, you imagine some old lady who's lost her, uh, who, who's lost everything and you know there used to be pension books and maybe she's lost her pension book or something like that and and she's got no food in the cupboard and um 
but goes about her day just the same, but with no mm. food, or a, or a, or a, a, a woman woman alone with a with a with a child who who you know is desperate and can't uh, can't feed her child i'm not saying that's a small thing but mm -hmm. i'm i'm saying that that's an everyday thing every day thing, yeah. now and mm -hmm. that is every bit as uh, compelling or can be as every bit as compelling a story as some you know ghastly serial killer on the on the prowl so you know mm -hmm. it, it it's it's the difficulties of life that mm. that are behind the, these these stories that we tell that's that's so fascinating so it's like it's almost like um stories even that uh, stories is an experience but it's it's almost like we're giving people a solution to a problem isn't it um, like it could be um, somebody would, could see potentially see themselves in that scenario because they've struggled with that issue or topic or whatever's going on and they've seen somebody do it and they're like well, what did this person do to come out of that so it's almost like we see ourselves in those situation scenarios and we're seeking a way out and a story is almost like a, a, a possible solution on how something could happen but then with this with the story it's like all the other things that go on between how they got from one place to the other in some cases a person might think well that's something i'll never do but that i could do <laughs> right <laughs> you know and then so it's almost like the story is a reflection of life but it's also it's also like a solution to a problem yeah the salute i think this the solution is not necessarily um you know a concrete thing mm -hmm. like, you've got to do this you know yeah yeah you've got no food you go to a food bank no it's it it, it it's it the solution is the bravery yeah. is, is is the persistence is is the faith it's the yeah it's the faith wow. that the that the person has in the story mm. and you think i could have that faith Mm -hmm. and then somehow it'll be okay you know mm -hmm. so it's more to do with a with a deep uh feeling of um y you know um faith and uh belief in mm. however you want to you know sort of characterize it whether yeah. you're god or the universe mm. whatever you want um because life can be very lonely for people mm -hmm. and um and sometimes a really great film uh watching somebody who's who 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 is who is struggling but but ultimately winning can uh can relieve that sense of loneliness and sort of think well yeah we are actually all on the same path mm -hmm. we are all struggling and we are but we are all going to be kind of saved in the end if you like no definitely and when you're sharing that it's like i'm just listening to what you're saying and i'm thinking you know what a, a story is powerful because it's kind of engaging you on all levels isn't it because you'll see you know we're talking about the scenario the situation the possibilities faith how it's making you feel there's emotion there's like it's literally taking you taking your whole body into that situation and scenario and that, so that, that just shows the power of storytelling is, uh, the, you know, being able to connect with people at a deeper level. But there's like so many almost like layers of how you can connect with people. Mm. Mm, that's, that's fascinating. I mean, if we take all of that then and then we want people to present that somebody might be listening and think, well, how do I um, tell stories? But they have fears about how they go about actually sharing their story. Like what could we do about fears and doubts that people might have? to tell stories yeah i mean that's that's really a, a major part of what my course is trying to do is trying to get people past that self-doubt mm -hmm. you know because uh especially nowadays the commercial world is is so sort of it's quite brutal really and mm -hmm. um it can it can make you feel that it's all pretty hopeless you know there's there's a there's a million 
stories being told, being published every day, and uh, and there's so much television, so and so many stories being told everywhere. It can be quite intimidating, but the mm. but the value of writing a story is 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 for yourself. Um, mm. That's the first. That's the first first thing to understand. You know, it starts with reading, where we where we read something that just fires our imagination, um, and that can be that can be well, it is extremely important for people and 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 very rewarding. But it's not it's not nearly as rewarding as 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 writing it yourself and and giving that to others in the form of a of a story it it's it's such a satisfying thing to do uh i can't i can't explain it um but um yeah people uh people feel that they that that they they're not going to be good enough mm -hmm. uh or that they that they're not up to it um and uh, i try to tell people that you know all of our experiences are valid we're, we're all part of the same culture and um, mm. and uh, every voice is 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 uh, part of the whole thing um, so you you can't you can't worry about who's going to read it mm. You've got to write it. You've got to write the story that that you would love to read, mm. and and uh, and just see where that takes you. Mm. And it is a journey. This is the other fascinating thing. You don't ever know when you start on a story how it's going to end. Mm. You don't. Mm. And I liken it to uh, a sort of. Um, uh, you know, a, a, a sailing ship in the, you know, um, Columbus and people like that, and, you know, in the 16th century. And uh, they didn't just sail, uh, they didn't just set sail and, and, and you know, pot luck, see where they ended up. They had a map. Mm -hmm. it, was, it may have, may have been a crude map, but it was still a map. But they didn't know where they were going to, they didn't really know where they were going to end up. Mm -hmm. So you have a direction, you think you know more or less how it's going to resolve itself. Mm -hmm. but, but the journey for you as a, as a writer is fascinating because you're discovering it as you go along. As you go along, yeah. Yeah. And I do that with ev everything I've ever written. I'm sort of halfway through, and I and I and I and I say, "Well, that's where I wanted to go, but this way over here mm. is even more interesting." Mm -hmm. So, um, so you're discovering things all the time as you mm -hmm. write. You discover discovering things about yourself. You're discovering things about the subject that you're writing on that you hadn't previously thought of yeah again through this system of options which uh you you're constantly monitoring your own progress as you write mm -hmm. or you should be because it's very very easy to to just uh stall you know to just end up uh nowhere mm -hmm. stuck the writer's block, yeah. <laughs> the writer's block, yeah. And I, that's that's easy to fix. It really mm -hmm. is easy to fix. Mm. But um, you 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 sometimes end up going around in circles. Um, so it's very important to stop, go back to what you go back to basics. Think of what you were trying to achieve in the first place. Mm. Ask yourself where it's going wrong. And then put it right, and then it's fascinating. It's it, you know, it's it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Every story is a journey. Yeah, and that's why I love it so much. So you know, you mentioned um, the writer's block. Um, what can you share in regards? Just in case somebody's listening and they're like, okay, David said it's easy, but what's like 
a simple technique or, or, I know there's you probably got way like lots of techniques but like what's one simple technique somebody can use in order to get over that ask the question mm. yeah even, even as simple as why have I got writer's block or you know what is wrong with this story what is wrong you know be be personal be personal mm -hmm. why have i why have i stopped writing mm -hmm. you'd be surprised if you write something down mm -hmm. and then and then force yourself to come up with with uh, with an answer not just one but many, many. yeah and that very often, if you give yourself options, it's like your brain goes, "Oh, okay, I can play. I can. I can play with this." Right. Very often, if you write down like one, two, three, you got a mm. list there. You say to yourself, "I got to fill this list." Mm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. see, very often, you if you write the first one, yeah. Well, it could be this. Mm. Very often, you go. It is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so interesting because it's almost like you're writing about something, and your brain knows, like in, subconsciously, consciously, it knows that there's many possibilities of how which path you could take, right? And then it could bl get blocked, thinking, well, which path do I take? Which is the best one for this? And then it gets it stops. And then, like you're saying, in order to get it back on path. You would ask questions hmm. that would uh, that they could write down and say, actually, if you could go that way, could go that, and then all of a sudden the brain goes, actually, that would be the best path to do at this yeah. moment. Yeah. Okay. And that, and, and that self doubt which creeps in those mm -hmm. you know, those worrisome doubts, they're roadblocks mm. because because what they do is they cut off your your, your creative process at that point. And the longer the longer it's cut off, the more that's reinforced. Ah, oh. yeah. So, so you got to skip past that quickly, Quick, so yeah. that it doesn't become a block. A block. Wow. Wow. Um, just keep it flowing. Keep it flowing, mm. and then you can get back on on the on the right path. Oh wow. Yeah, that, that that that's fascinating. I mean, I'm, that's like you said, that is one uh, a simple thing that people can do is if they get stuck, like you said, write down different possibilities, write down questions to get over that block as quickly as you can. That's um, awesome. that's that's fantastic. Like, so as as I'm listening to this, I'm just thinking about the the listeners and we we you know we we're talking about a, you know digital report, we're talking about online marketing, we're talking about business and all these kind of things, and uh, you know, you might have authors involved in there. Now, like we said earlier on, there's kind of a few possibilities in the sense that you either share your experience, which is very real. It's a lot, something you could do a lot easily because you're just sharing something that you've done, the action you took, right? And then on the other side, it would be a story that you can, so like an author could potentially be writing stories about idea or a concept. And for them, you know, they're creating this, endless possibility that's never possibly been explored and they're trying to go down this to create something out of nothing in a way isn't it mm -hmm. um so if we take uh, so we've spoken about that the subconscious mind on that side of it so if we take just real like you know somebody could get up go online and they can just go on social media and share a story like are there any tips you've got about how somebody might share a story but it's engaging enough to get people invested in it you know, um, what would you say to that? Well, the story breaks into into three parts: the the premise, mm -hmm. the complication, yeah, and, and the resolution. Right. So the premise, uh, the premise, can be or should be very very simple and straightforward. Like somebody wins. I don't know, somebody wins the lottery or, you know, some kid finds a wallet stuffed full of money, you know, uh, just some incident which you think, which makes you think, I wonder what, I wonder what will happen. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder how that will pan out. Mm -hmm. The second part 
of the story is where there's a complication which the 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 hero or protagonist did not foresee mm. so um so i don't know the wallet belongs to some uh big shot gangster or something <laughs> you know uh s something which complicates the situation mm. um again if you if, if you if you analyze stories if you think of stories um that you love movies that you love I always tell people you know think think of where the complication comes think of what the premise is and the complication mm -hmm. the resolution tends to take care of itself because mm. it goes it goes this way or that way depending on how things have resolved you know mm -hmm. but um the premise some sometimes called an inciting incident Mm -hmm. um is is the is what's going to hook the the uh, we're in or the or the or the viewer yeah um and it's not easy to come up with these things because everything's been done a million times but, <laughs> um, you know there there are there are so many different versions of the same kind of story mm. you know uh but nevertheless it's this the only way to to hook people in is to is to think of something that uh is unusual that's thought provoking that's going to make people want to know what what happens next mm -hmm. uh, yeah but, uh, not easy but, but that's 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 fascinating itself. I mean, like those three simple things, yeah, is um, enough for somebody to go and start saying, okay, I want to create a video on social media. And if they follow those three steps, for example, that's something they can do um, quite quite easily based on on the experience. Is um, but what we're seeing from all of this, what you're sharing, is is there is there is an art and science to this. There is so many embedded layers because it goes for there's like a full spectrum involved. Uh, um, and, um, you know, being able to tap into all of those elements will allow you to create a really powerful story, right? And that's the kind of work you do. You help people create powerful stories, right? Um, so, um, you know, you're, you're taking people from the initial idea to the finished manuscript in the cases where people want to write a story. Um, you know, you've done stuff with uh, theater, radio, TV, authors, social media, this just shows that storytelling is something that should, I reckon, be incorporated into everyday life, right? Um, you must be sharing stories all the time with people, clients and stuff. Do you find that it's much powerful to engage people through story um, than just trying to sell something to someone? Yes, I mean, I've, I've done a, a presentation um, which is addressing why uh people don't um can you know why people give up on their stories mm -hmm. and in that i've tried to talk about my own uh journey uh the story of how i got into writing and there's mm -hmm. a sort of tragic element in there as, as as well because um you know i lost my older sister when i was only 18 and she was 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that point on, I mean, I'd started to, I'd started to um, dabble with a bit of writing, but from that point on, my life got more sort of lonely. Uh, not just because I lost my sister, but also lost, sort of lost my parents in a mm -hmm. in a sense because they, they they found it very very difficult to handle mm -hmm. the, the the tragedy. And they actually moved away down to Cornwall to start a new life, and I was left in in London uh, as a as a as a student mm -hmm. going to college and um, sort of beginning to live life on my own and mm -hmm. having having lost my sister, and it sort of really sent me mm -hmm. uh, inside myself. Mm -hmm. And um, out of that almost as a sort of as an antidote i started to write more and more mm. and uh also acted as well in, the, in those days and so um the the writing was 
really helpful to me. It sort of brought me back to life after a, a few years. I, I, I started writing seriously from about the age of 22, 23. Right. But before that, in my in my college years, I was I, I went through a really uh, tough period of 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 being very feeling very isolated and and, and lonely. And uh, in the telling of that story, uh, it it seemed to it made a lot of sense to me. I hadn't really thought about it much before that. Mm -hmm. uh, but sitting down to think. Um, of how I got to where I eventually ended up, you know, mm. writing television. Uh, I saw that I'd actually been been quite sort of resourceful uh, and and quite brave in in, in uh, facing up to that loss and mm -hmm. uh, and turning it into something positive, you know. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got a everybody's a hero, you know. Yeah. Because, right. because no nobody's life is is, is smooth sailing, you know. Mm. So um, but it's those defining moments, I suppose, that you're looking for in every yeah. in every life. Mm. That's yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, like even just sharing sharing your story. I mean, it takes the person there. I mean, you know, we 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 start to we start to like, I suppose it's like mirror neurons all this firing off where we try to experience what the other person is experiencing as well, isn't it? Um, but that's a, that's a very powerful thing about how you took adversity, something difficult and you turned it into something very powerful that, you know, it's like almost like a blessing in a sense as well, because yes. it's set you on your path where you've impacted so many people because coming with media, creating a theater, like it, you, thousands of people are coming into contact with your work and they're going away laughing from the comedy side of stuff. They're getting deep mm. connections. So you're making an impact in people's lives through stories. Mm. Right. Um, and that's a, that's a blessing in itself. Right. So it's very, very powerful. So thank you for doing what you're doing in regards to that. Oh. Um, and, and, uh, you know, um, I, like there's so much, there's so many questions that I could be asking about, like, well, what else can we do? And I know, we're limited on, on time, but if so, if people want to, you know, get in touch with you and find out more, what's the best thing for them to do? Um, um, my website, um, davidrichardfox.com. I'm very, very happy to uh, chat with anyone who wants to get in touch and all the details are on there. So uh, that's the first thing they could do. Mm. Um, I just wanted to say one more thing about that experience that I had is, is, yep. that, you, is that you don't really know at the time that you're doing mm. any of this stuff, that you're True. being resourceful, that you're being brave, that you're mm -hmm. turning a bad situation into a good one. That's right. You said the word blessing, which I think is, is the, the right word. It's only, it's only when you look back. That's right. After, mm. after a long period of time and you think, no, actually – that was good. I did mm. something good. Mm. And um, I think that's what people need to realize because I didn't know mm. until I actually sat down and thought, you know, well, where, you know, where did I, where did I get all the, where did I come from in that sense? Mm. How did I get on this path? Mm. And I, and, and I looked at it and I, and I, and I saw that, um, that was that was how that was how I did it by just mm. by just sort of um, turning turning the the bad stuff into into something good. So mm. and ev ev I think everybody can do that. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for sharing in the sense that you know because I, I, there's a lot of a uh, lot of information is also there. I mean, if people think about it, the, the stories are powerful. We know that in, in everyday life and everyday living. You can use them, for, as we spoke about, for business, for personal life, for online, everything. They used get used everywhere. I mean, that's what most of TV is about. Media is about storytelling. Um, and so being able to understand that um, and connect with your audience is something I think everybody should learn. They should learn how to do that, how to tell a story. Um, and like from just even this conversation, we know that it's a case of learning and understanding yourself, you know, how you work, how you process your brain, all that kind of stuff. And then tapping into that so you can become resourceful in order to share the ideas that you're coming up with. And that's what it essentially is, isn't it? You're sharing 
an idea uh, and a thought process. It's like from what you, I know you quite well anyway, and, and I know that you share you you come from the experience of something, and like you alluded to earlier on, you can't write for everyone. You can only share your story or idea with people and the people it resonates with is going to resonate with them some people it might not that's just life that's just the way it is yeah. so um yeah I, any last thoughts any last words you want to share with the the listeners in regards to storytelling and any other deeper message you want to share with them <laughs> the only thing i would say is that um it doesn't it it doesn't actually matter what the subject is because it can because uh some stories are very tragic, mm. very hard hitting, very dark, mm. but it's always fun to write. Even, mm. e- even a even a tough, hard hitting story is fun to write, because mm. if it even if it's your ex- your own experience and it's a very a difficult experience, the 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 um, the effort of 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 writing it is a, is a release it's a form of release therapeutic yeah. yeah so there's there's a, there's a great sense of of fun in putting it into words and putting it out there and it might may sound sort of counterintuitive but uh, that's been my experience yeah you know, I'm sure when Shakespeare wrote the ending of Romeo and Juliet, you know, where they both die, he probably he probably thought, that's a great ending. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to end the story. <laughs> he probably leapt around the room, you know, sort of uh, thinking, thinking, uh, what a terrific ending. Yeah, definitely. So there's there's always fun to be had. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh wow, this this has been insightful. I mean, you've got me thinking in many different ways as well now about my storytelling and how it can be utilized. So on that note, thank you very much, David. And you know, I'll put the links in the description below so people definitely reach out to David if you want to learn more about stories. And um, yeah, on that note, thank you very much. Lovely speaking to you. Thank you.